With the rear suspension removed, I can now work taking it all apart. So I'm going to start from the outside and work my way in, disconnecting the half shaft here, removing the hub carrier, removing the springs and dampers, then it'll be the brakes and finally I'll take the differential out of the uh, frame here and drop it out and I'll be left with a load of bits. I'm starting off by removing the split pin on the end of the half shaft. A simple enough job, but this side takes five minutes and a variety of tools, whereas the other side only takes 30 seconds. In this video I'll be mostly focusing on one side of the IRS as they're both the same, but as you'll see in a couple of minutes, the side I've started here has a problem lurking. Right, last time I was here, the castellated nut on the end of this half shaft was absolutely stuck solid. So I've put some penetrating fluid in there and left it for a bit, hoping it will come undone now. Okay, so this time it's just sunk in and uh, it's working a lot, lot better. Now let's take this off. So in order to drive this fulcrum shaft out, I'm leaving this old nut on so that it doesn't damage the thread on the end of the shaft. Hopefully with just a little bit of encouragement, I've propped this up underneath with that block of wood just to clear the workbench here. Hopefully, yeah, it starts drifting through quite easily. So now that that's got started, I can take the nut off the end and use something else to help drift it through the rest of the way. literally pulls straight out. So with the pin out and the half shaft disconnected, I should be able to just pull this out now and disconnect it entirely. Okay, so this is hopefully where the copper and hide mallet comes in. So I don't want to damage the aluminium casting here at all. Okay, so I've come across a classic, classic car problem. I can't get the splined half shaft out of the hub. For whatever reason, it's stuck fast. The other one slides out, um, slid out really easily. This one should, but hasn't. So what I'm gonna to have to do is disconnect it at the other end. To do that first, I'm gonna to have to take these springs and dampers out first. So with the springs and dampers out of the way and the nuts undone that hold this uh, half shaft onto the disc brake, I can now finally, hopefully, pull this all out with a bit of levering. There we go. So now I can start to work out why the spline shaft won't come out of the hub. This side is absolutely fine. Literally when you undo the nut in the end of the half shaft, it should pull out just like that. So those splines fit inside a corresponding set of splines inside the hub and it should just pull out. And there's a, yeah, that's the nut that retains it. So I'm using a socket on the end of the spline shaft and a hammer to try and drift it out. This doesn't work. Then I go to a bigger hammer and try and hit it a bit harder. This also doesn't work. We're going for the slightly more subtle but a lot more powerful press. So in effect this is a bottle jack within a big frame and it's just going to exert a really big downwards force onto the half shaft. I've had to prop it up in a very careful way because of course the, the hub is at an angle. So but in this 12 ton press even this isn't budging it, much to my frustration. So my next tactic is really heat up the hub and then press it, but even this is unsuccessful. The likely explanation is somebody has loctited the splines together because they can click. So I'll come back to this later and focus on the strip down. So I want to take apart the calipers from around the discs so I can then get access to the discs and take them off the differential. I'm going to start by undoing this handbrake. So the handbrake is operated separately via a cable that goes in here. So that pulls both of these 
and operates those levers which have separate pads to the main caliper pads here. So everything's covered in grease, but I need to remove the split pins that hold this pin in place to undo this joint in the mechanism. Okay, so with that, I can push that pin out and disconnect that part of the handbrake. I then undo these two bolts and that'll allow me to withdraw this lever arm. This grubby bit here is actually a locking washer. So it's a, got locking tabs on the end here that stop the bolt from rotating. You can see I just tap these out of the way and they bend. They allow you to get clearance onto the head of the bolt there. Oh, and finally, so there we go. Taking all that to withdraw. It's not actually a thread. The threaded part is only at the top here. But um, getting it out has proven quite a challenge. And finally, we've got the second one out. So we've got the locking tab. Right, so it's been in there for quite a while, so uh, it's not really wanting to come out. But eventually I've got to the point where I can withdraw the handbrake lever mechanism from the top of the frame here. So my next job is to get the caliper here out. Um, these, this plate here with the bolt through the middle, that holds the brake pads in place. So we can just see these little tabs. Those are uh, for withdrawing the pads. They've got a hole in them and you're meant to hook them out. So we can see here, um, <laughs> a seal that's not very, doing a very good job on the caliper piston itself. So this is two 7 16 spanners. Now we need to undo this. Again, one handy tip I would recommend with all of this is take lots of photos. Um, it's so easy today on a smartphone to record how it looked beforehand and you want really good close-ups. So with that, I should be able to just pull or pry this out. There we go. So that's what holds the brake pads in place. So the brake pad here is showing absolutely no sign of coming out easily and it's not easy to with get the piston to retract either. So what I'm actually doing here is undoing these mounting bolts for this piston. And so I've got four bolts to undo. Now they're quite tricky to access. So I'm having to use a small ratchet as well as a uh, a ring spanner here to get in the less accessible ones, but it seems to be doing the job. So, so if I look in from above, this is where you can see what I've been doing here, just trying to undo this caliper bolt. Focus, there we go. It's getting in there. So it's the last one just about to pop out. And that should allow me to move the piston away. Uh, and off, which is good, but um, it's also worth at the same time having a look here. You can see this locking wire here, that is what um, the bolts for the caliper um, mount to the differential with. So to finish removing this piston, I'm going to disconnect this connection at the top and this one out of this uh, T-piece. There we go. Okay. So there we can actually see the, the face of the piston. So the brake pressure pushes the piston out and what's meant to happen is the brake pad sits in there and holds it in place nicely. But obviously over time, it all just comes apart. But these are perfectly serviceable. Um, it's possible to get these refurb, but you can easily buy replacements as well. So I'll, uh, I'll be taking these apart and having a good look at them. So I've undone the other piston now and you can see that um, this is what they call a link pipe that goes between one side of the piston where the supply comes from and then it links directly into the next one. So pull that out. There we go. So with the piston out the way we can get this side view where you can actually see the brake pad just stuck in place there. Yeah, so here we go. Just literally levering it out, which is what I was trying to do all along. It just it was kind of stuck well in. have a look at this now. So you can see the score marks where the brake disc has been rotating, but um, look at the amount of meat still on that. This car really hasn't driven many miles on these pads at all. 
The other thing to point out about this is that these bolt heads are really difficult to access. So I've actually taken this 5 8 offset ring spanner and ground the head down. So you can see there it's kind of got some uh, marks where I've used a fine uh, grinding wheel. And uh, just to get that bit of extra clearance, because this one in particular, this bottom one, wasn't going on at all. So that just makes it possible to uh, get the head on there cleanly, because if you start rounding those off, it's going to be very, very much more difficult to get into. Finally, nearly there. There we go. Okay. And with that, the piston carrier lifts free. So I've actually flipped the IRS onto its back, but it gives us a good chance to see what's going on. So the lower wishbone here, you can see it's got that great big fulcrum shaft that runs right through from side to side, and bearings here, and you can see the grease points for um, the bearings either side. See the brake disc in the middle, we can see that the, uh, the differential has been leaking oil, so it looks like that's been coming out of the pinion. You'll notice that I'm missing the plate that holds all of this together, so it wasn't on the car. Um, I don't know what's happened to it, they cost about £75 to replace. Mm. Again, one of those things, recommissioning this car, it's just a bit that's gone missing over time. So I'm trying to get access to this bolt here. Um, but what I'm realising is that this lower control arm, or low wishbone, is in the way. Got a spanner on the other side there, I can now undo this much more easily. So I'm just using a small extension piece here. So with this fulcrum shaft part way through here now, I'm just going to put the socket back on the end and pull it as I twist it to get it to withdraw. There we go. And fulcrum shaft again. This is perfectly serviceable. I just need to work out how to get the uh, the nut off this end without causing any damage, and um, that can be reused. So now this bottom wishbone should just drop out. So I've chopped the frame to give clearance for this to drop out. Hopefully, oh, there we go, very easy. So this is the radius arm to lower wishbone link. That nut there is a tricky one, so uh, I'm getting some heat on it. So with the nut off, now I'm in a position where I can actually drift out that bolt to separate the radius arm, hopefully. And there we have it. So I'm going to remove both of these, but before I do that, it's worth noting that we've got some long strips of shim here that obviously offset this mounting point outboard um, a little bit. So I want to be careful there to know what to do. And again, this bolt here is lock wired up onto another bolt that's kind of hidden in here. Now it looks like this bolt head is completely inaccessible. But actually this distance tube here that the fulcrum shaft goes through is just in place. It's held in place by the fulcrum shaft itself. So when the fulcrum shaft's removed, you can just tap it out. Again, there we go. So now I've got easy access to both bolt heads. So now that's off, I can have a look at what's remaining of the shims. So most of the other stuff out the way, I can then just Undo these nuts, take the shims out the way, and remove the brake disc. I've put the frame back upright again, but this time instead of supporting it all off the frame, I've put the blocks of wood underneath the differentials. Once I've undone these bolts here, I should just be able to lift the frame right off. So as you can see, there's more locking wire here done very nicely, sort of. Uh, S shape around the uh, the bolt heads, so I'll cut them off and get undoing again. Okay. There we have it. One stripped for a suspension. Okay. So what I'm going to do is have a good clean down and lay everything out and uh, have a think about starting to refurbish each part individually.
So first of all, we've got the differential, which as a minimum needs servicing and a good clean up and repaint. Next are the brake discs and shims. So the discs, of course, are being replaced. Next, it's the lower wishbones and radius arms. So new bearings, new bushings and a repaint. Then it's the inboard fulcrum shaft bracket. So new bearings, a repaint and, of course, new shims. Next, it's the brake calipers. So clean, strip down, repaint and replace parts as necessary. Then it's a similar story with the handbrake levers as well. These old springs and damples will be going in the bin to be replaced with new ones. Then it's the half shafts, hubs, bearings and universal joints. I'll work out what to do with these when I can get the one that I can't get apart sorted. Then it's the anti-roll bar, brackets and drop links. I'll be getting these sandblasted and repaint them. And finally the rear frame with its new plate that I need to buy still. This all needs refurbishing along with the handbrake mechanism there. So there's my pile of bits. Thank you very much for watching. Next time I'll be refurbishing each part to get the IRS looking as good as new and ready to put back on the car.